right. The Black Lives Memorial Garden is being demolished right now. It's in Seattle? Uh, yeah, I mean, I recognize it. About two dozen cops showed up earlier this morning to clear out the garden. Parks Department contractors erected a fence perimeter around the whole area, presumably to protect city workers. Activists say they did not have the numbers to sufficiently resist. Do I care about this? I always thought that having, like, dedicated BLM memorials and gardens and stuff was a pretty stupid idea. Like, it's a movement. You're really going to have, like, an indefinite bit of city land dedicated to, like, a temporal... Like, you have no idea how that stuff develops. Also, like, black people don't need gardens. They need policy. This is it? I guess. I'm, I'm sorry. This is literally like a tent camp with a little, like, fenced-off dying plot of, of, of tomato plants in the middle. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, of course, them, them clearing this also means clearing the homeless, so there's that. Probably not a great look for the Black Lives Matter movement that, you know, it's, it's areas being used as a tent city anyway. Why is it so small? Because I think it's just, like, just some people tending to it. I don't even know if it's, like, an official thing or whatever. It might be, it's, it's possible it's being done without, like, the city's permission, even? I don't know. Let's see. Where is this? Seattle. Seattle's plan to remove Cal Anderson Park's BLM Garden draws pushback. They originally, it was planted in Cal Anderson Park as part of 2020's BLM protest, but the group that stewards the garden, Black Star Farmers, is rallying community members to save it. Okay, I'm going to sound really callous here, to be honest with you. I, I just, like, what's what's saving here? It's literally, like, so it wasn't even, like, city official. It was just, like, during the thing. You just wanted a community garden. Like, let's not pretend this is some kind of, like, broader protest thing. Would it be better if they upgraded it to an official thing, though? I don't know. I'm kind of eh on community gardens. You need a few of them, but like this park? I mean, something has to be done with it. Well, it depends on whether they're going to do something with it, Tapster. Maybe there have been complaints. It is in an existing park. Back to parking lot? Well, it's, it's in a park. You can see the park here. See? Community gardens look nice. Yeah, if they're done well. The Parks Department says the BLM Memorial Garden must be removed to support larger community use of the park, which was part of the Capitol Hill organized protest zone. Da -da -da. The Black Star Farmer says the garden honors black and indigenous people killed by police and speaks to Seattle's history of occupation protests led by poor. And the garden has also been a source of joy and healing for many Capitol Hill community members, including renters without much access to green space, the group said. Most of the plants there are perennial native plants that have been thriving for years. The garden provides free food and herbal medicine, the group said. Dude, this is the shit that makes me hate your... First of all, free food. Do you have any idea how little food is produced by, a, like, this community? Do you have any... No, what? This isn't enough to feed a single person, okay? Come on. Herbal medicine? Come on. Stop, stop, stop. There is no disease a person is getting that it would be easier to spend months tending to a plot of land to get some, like, hippie herb shit to rub on your skin as opposed to the $2 you could get the medicine for at the drugstore, okay? Stop pretending. Just say you want a community garden. The only legitimate, like, point here is um, a source of joy and healing provides access to green space. That's valid. Don't pollute your advocacy with this hippie bullshit. Dog, this is a shit take. It's not enough for everyone, so it's worthless. Are you kidding? Are you really going to pretend that the fact that you aren't producing enough food for a single person isn't a good argument against a community garden being advocated for in the basis that it provides food? Don't Just don't use it as your argument, okay? Nobody gets their food from community gardens, all right? No, you couldn't, Mistress Lynn. For an entire year, constantly, year-round, this doesn't provide enough food for anyone. This is like maybe once or twice a month. Homeless people do, lol. No, they don't! Homeless people do not get their food from community gardens. No, it's not. That's not true. That is not where their food comes from. I get food from community gardens. What the f*** are you talking about, Bosch? Oh my god, I'm not going to argue against your lived experience. There's plenty of math out there on how much food is actually produced by these. You getting like a carrot from them once a month does not mean that this is some kind of active food space. This this is one of the things that infuriates me about like the it's like the anarchist tradition of impracticality. Like there's some necessary mandate of worthlessness you have to fulfill in order to be one. Or it's like, yeah, in the future everyone will have like plots of like gardens on their roofs and in their backyard or whatever. Why why? Why should we subject ourselves to inefficiently produced food? You're producing nothing. Your little fucking tomato garden is producing nothing. Your tiny tomatoes can't sustain anyone. Why? Why should all that land that could be used for housing?
this feels slightly and prim. People devolve into and prims, like the nanosecond stuff like this comes up. Just say you like having a community garden because it's a good community space. That's fine. Don't pretend that it's like a sustenance thing or whatever. Land costs money. This is a city with a housing crisis, okay? Don't, don't, don't pretend, you, it's like, ugh. I like the connection to nature aspect. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's valid. You're boxing with ghosts. Five messages above you is somebody saying that community gardens provide a supplement for people who need free food, which is a very different claim to people get their food from here. Like, you could say anything is a supplement for free food. Like, anything that provides one ounce of food is a supplement for people who need free food. Like, that's not really an argument for the space. Community gardens take up way less space than zoning, to be fair. Everything is zoned. What do you mean? This is zoned as a park. I just, ha I just hate the LARPy justifications. Just say it's for community beautification or something. It's here to honor black and indigenous people killed by police. <sighs> yeah. The Parks Department's actions hide behind a facade of placating those who want the space back for movie nights and other events, Black Star Farmers said in an email Tuesday, urging supporters to sign a petition against the removal. We don't understand why the garden is impeding these activities from continuing in the space, as events have been held beautifully in the space for the last three years, many different organizations. Um, Shulkin uh, said a post-chop community engagement effort by the Parks Department suggested there was a community desire for the garden to be relocated within Cal Anderson. The department... Well, that's good, Tempest. The department has been in regular communication with Black Star Farmers since 2020, offering alternative sites in Cal Anderson and other parks. Is that true? The department's offers to relocate the garden have not been accepted. So it contacted Black Star Farmers last week to give notice the garden would be removed. Wait, they offered to move it? What about, I want to hear more about that. At least two weeks of the plans to be connected. The department wants to reseed the area for turf restoration. That means green grass. In accordance with seasonal timeliness, please know the parks might respect the intense symbolic meaning. Should Black Star Farmers be interested in creating a garden within the Seattle Park System? We are supportive and willing to help them find an appropriate location. I, well, I want to know what the locations are, because it could be the Parks Department is lying. Black Star Farmers described the department's previous communications as, quote, one-sided negotiations and inadequate attempts at mediation. The department initially offered to move the garden to the outskirts of Cal Anderson. Okay. Wait. Isn't that the same park system? Yeah, the Cal Anderson Park. It's the same park system. Would, wouldn't being moved to a different place in the same park still be... Okay? They were too busy harvesting herbal medicine to file the form to move it, yeah. It's a different park, though. Is it, it's the same Cal Anderson Park, right? Yeah, originally planted Cal Anderson Park, moved to the outskirts of Cal Anderson Park. Same park. Later to an area behind Rainier Community Center in South Seattle, but, quote, there has never been an option to stay in the current spot, the group said. Oh my f***ing god. Black Star Farmers described the department's previous communications as one-sided negotiations and inadequate attempts at mediation. How is it inadequate? Well, they never provided an option to stay in the exact same spot. Then, then how, then, then what negotiation is that? Then you never offered to move. Well, well you, ooh. Oh my god, this is why I can tell. It's ooh, it's literally it's this 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 Black Star Farmers is probably like three people who wanted to like, I don't know, sell overpriced mason jars with cookie making ingredients in them for $13 a pop to white people who came to Cal Anderson Park during the chop movement. And this is like the legacy of their entrepreneurial spirit. I ooh. Okay. In a newsletter, Black Star Farmers said removing the garden would be, quote, consistent with violent state projects like imperialism, colonization, and gentrification. Know when you're being lied to, chat. Oh my god. Jesus. This is, it's the whole, of course, because this was from CHOP. This was the Chaz, the, this was from the Ch Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. This is there. That's there. This is that. So, of course, it's like this. These people made this little garden at the height of the LARP. The LARPiest zone in the world back in 2020. On Tuesday, the group shared remarks from a number of unnamed community members who use and support the garden. The garden is my child's favorite place to go in Cal Anderson Park, one person said, according to Black Star Farmers. Another called the garden one of the few spaces in Capitol Hill that genuinely cultivates community. Well, 
Sorry, it could have been moved to another place in the Cal Anderson Park, apparently, but that wasn't good enough for the people managing this not city park sanctioned little plot of land. You know, it could have been moved there, I guess. You know, but all right, like oh, now it has to be torn down because your idiot advocates. Did, oh. And they live in my city, too. They're going to like show up and kill me or something. God damn it. On Wednesday, group members Marcus Henderson and Stephanie Webb pointed to various plants and circular beds, including Aramanth Tobacco. Damn, this was part of the BLM movement. You're you're having you're having black people plant tobacco, and this is anti-colonization. Get out of here. Corn, strawberries, currants, cal calendula, nettles, and fava beans. I don't know what the f half this is. Amaranth, isn't she a Twitch streamer or something? The Cal Anderson Park Alliance, a civic organization has been focused on getting the park's restrooms, lighting, and other infrastructure repaired and maintained. Board co-chair Bree Ginsild said in email Tuesday, the Alliance hasn't taken a position on the garden's fate except to ask the city for clarity as it's been in limbo for years. We receive questions. That's fair. Asking for clarity is always a good thing, I guess. I want to want to know more about the negotiations and the other plot of land. Yeah, I would too. It seems like Black Star Farmers hasn't been very like public or forward-facing with the options. If they were really community oriented, shouldn't they have been more transparent and like publicly stating, hey, these are our options. What do we want to do about it or something? Ah, I just, guys, I have a very low tolerance for this specific kind of activist. They do nothing. They change nothing. They get incredibly self-important about the tiny minuscule effect they have in their local community. And then they defend it. They'll say anything. They'll say any old shit. Oh yeah, them uprooting the, 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 the garden is like colonization or something. It's like slavery and the death of the natives doubled over all over again you know i i just i see this it just makes me very cynical i hate it i hate it market socialism would save this market socialism has nothing to do with this this kind of makes me angry at Vosh. do all activists have to do stuff exactly as you say or are they just horrible larpers if if you have heard what i've said and you think my issues can be summed up as they need to do exactly what i say then you haven't been paying attention to what I've said. You've misconstrued my argument. My argument is not that they have to do exactly what I say. It's that they, they, in the tiny slice of them that I have seen through their own statements, they have already appeared to me as uh, like the bearers of red flags, uh, people of whom you should be naturally suspicious. You have to be careful about this shit, you know? You guys know that the Black Lives Matter organization, not the movement, the organization, was full of like LARPing, grifting dumbasses who profited massively uh, from denigrating the reputation of the movement, you know, you have to be cynical. I, I will, I don't extend any like innate, uh, value or, or, or credibility or whatever to people just because they're throwing around words like decolonization, you know, I, I'm sorry. Like my experiences with the left have taught me that doing that is what enables the worst elements of the left to be active. You have to be very critical at all times. And we have to expect high levels of pragmatism from people who are lucky enough to have been given city permission to maintain that plot. You know how lucky those guys are? 99% of the time, shit like this doesn't even take off. Those guys got a plot and defended it for years. And then when it like when the city finally comes to take its land, and it is city land, by the way, it's not like they're it's not like they're, you know, clearing out like somebody's private property. Like that's part of the parks department's territory. And then their response to it is to go like, um, they didn't didn't even consider the possibility of leaving us exactly where we are so we didn't even care to engage like fuck off like well like, yeah. yeah i just that stuff just really bugs me and and to, to like the herbal medicine and the providing food and the like you know this honors the uh, just 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 uh da, 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 da. this is their website and they did a lot of good work there on the website Dude, oh man, shit like this gives me so many red flags. Vosh's Prager U segment there. Yeah, there you go. It might just also be how fucking gardens work. Yeah, the radical reclamation of land and food sovereignty. Like, stuff like this should be setting off a ton of red flags in your head. Like, this is nothing language. This is like collegiate, like, uh, progressive uh, duck speak designed to like soften the brains of 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 left-leaning people who read it you know i i, I don't this yeah i i don't if you want to see groups that actually are helping the poor and the needy in your community go volunteer at a food kitchen it, it's not glamorous but those mother do way more work for the people who need it than anything like this the difference being that volunteering at a food kitchen doesn't make you feel like you're some kind of anarchist like warrior fighting for blah 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 you know 
You mean soup kitchen? Yeah, what did I say? Soup kitchen. What, what, what did I say? Food kitchen? Oh, yeah, soup kitchen. Or like food pantry. Yeah, like 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 working at a food pantry. Food bank. Yeah, food bank. Food bank, food pantry, uh, soup kitchen, that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, if you want to be part of a structure that actually feeds homeless people for free, uh, then you can go there. Are there non-food pantries? Does a pantry have to have food? I guess, maybe? No, you can have non-food contents of pantries. I think. I'm sorry, I should dial it back a little bit. Yes, I'm sure these are fine people. I'm sure they're nice people. I, I'm just very critical of this kind of behavior. It's very possible. It's very possible for people to be like this and to be like very good people. And they just, in my opinion, maybe are handling activism the wrong way, in my opinion. Your main issue with this is that it's cringe? No, 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 no. I actually think that stuff like this is a detriment to real organizing. I think that if you look back through time, organizing efforts in America or elsewhere for basically every cause have always, if they're successful, avoided language like this. The civil rights movement's an obvious example, but even the Black Panther Party was a lot more direct, you know? Um, the Black Panther Party was a lot more direct and engaged in material in the way that it addressed people's needs. They were a lot more, I guess, concerned with pragmatism. It's like that for most successful um, social movements, I feel. Stuff like this seems to me to be a red flag of like, this is managed by a few college students who, who have like a very, I guess, lofty sense of self-importance. This is like Black Hammer Org. Yes, um, that's a good example. The Black Hammer Org did talk like this, <laughs> or does, I guess. Vosh, I know some of the people who funded CHOP, the original funders, left there in a week since it was a temporary occupation. That's what the anarchists wanted to do. Then a bunch of liberals and grifters moved in, and now you have the... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I have my, my criticism of CHOP is, 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 is well known and loud. Um, is this a symptom of the U.S. not having a culture of organizing stuff? I think the main issue with this is that the people who need organizing the most tend to be poor and relatively uneducated, and the people who want to do the organizing the most have very high opinions of their intelligence, and their education on progressivism tends to be oriented very heavily towards, like, theory and verbosity and, you know, LARPy progressive duck-speak buzzwords. So you, you get it like an inconsistency where you have like, you know, it's like Kentacloth kneeling shit, right? Like you have very high-minded ideological attitudes towards very low material issues. Go work in a soup kitchen if you want to feed homeless people. Trust me, that's a much more effective way than like growing a tomato a year or whatever. I feel like I'm being really mean to people who probably live within a few miles of me. <laughs> See, it's stuff like this, man. Black star farmers facilitate relationships with plants and traditional medicines to create self-sufficient communities. Come on. When you do stuff like this, you're really kind of like denigrating, like the homeless people of Seattle are not going over here to have all of their self-sufficient needs met. Okay. The homeless people of Seattle are going to soup kitchens. Like, st stop. <laughs> Come on. Oh, these are just, why is the spacing weird? Also, traditional medicine is the biggest New Age bullshit LARP ever. Yep. If anyone ever advocates traditional medicine, you should just never listen to anything they have to say again. Uh, it's like full on, full stop. Like, like literally, like that's it. That's it. It's done right there. You're not a druid. Okay. Just pardon me again for sounding like a Reddit atheist, but the term for traditional medicine that works is medicine. If it worked, it would be part of medicine. You cannot concoct in a garden anything that even remotely matches the power of something that you can get for cheap at a pharmacy. That's the miracle of the modern world. You know, that's not, that's, that's not like cringe, corrupted modernity or whatever. This sounds like so many leftist activist spaces. Yeah, this is why I don't like the witchy shit either. Like there's so much horoscope shit, horoscopes, um, astrology, witchy stuff. Please stop. Please. The millions of poor people in this country are not going to have their lives improved by your crystals okay stop with this larpy bullshit all right holy like i hate it i genuinely hate it like f yeah do it do it for like a bit with your friends but if you're doing activism okay activism has pr processes that work and if you want to help homeless people go to a soup kitchen you know the real people who are on the vanguard of like putting themselves on the line to help the needy are not like witches in seattle uh, brewing potions okay it's those it's those poor activists in, in in like Dallas, Texas, who are feeding homeless people and getting arrested because they passed a law that makes it illegal to feed homeless people. 
Like if you if you if you want or is that is not is that not Dallas? Is that homeless? Houston. I'm thinking of Houston. Uh sorry. Houston, Texas, feeding homeless illegal. Charitable food service is only allowed on private property. Um, if it's on public property, it has to be done on one specific street in the entirety of the massive city of Houston. So there are people, volunteers going out there and risking arrest, providing food to homeless people. And none of these people, this is no spirit witchcraft bullshit. This isn't any like community garden rosemary herb bullshit. They're going out there, they're putting themselves at risk to do what needs to be done, and they're doing it in an unglamorous way. This shit is what actually builds community. These people actually need food, you know? Just don't lie. If you want to keep a community garden, that's fine. Just say that's what it's for. Don't lie. Don't say like, um, this is actually a healing space where you can encourage difficult communication regarding racial issues and provide self-sustenance for the... Just say people like having a community garden. And they do. They do. That's true. It's a good argument, you know? You guys understand my frustration now, don't you? Stuff like this exists to pull real, um real activists away from like effective work again there's nothing wrong with any of this in a vacuum this is a community garden that's great that's great keep doing a community garden that's great I, I think community gardens are nice i visited some that are near me a few times you know it's yeah that's fine just no bullshit people and don't get the whole thing torn down because you were too proud uh to allow the city to move it to the outskirts of cal anderson park you you could have kept it you just had to have it moved just say, yes, I would like to have it in this corner. Have like, they could have, mm, they could have cemented a legacy for the community garden by having it moved by the city rather than having it in limbo for it being torn down by the city. They could have like officially placed it there. They could have had the city designate the boundaries of the community garden and have it be an actual sanctioned legacy of Cal Anderson Park. But instead they were stupid and prideful and they refused to negotiate. And now the whole thing is going to get torn down. This has been in limbo for three years now. It was meant to be torn down three years ago. They could have had something permanent and they tossed it away because it was it was slavery and colonization and and 50 holocausts to ask them to move to another part of the same park <sighs> on the state's dime too the state was the city i should say the city was offering to take care of it like they were going to move it not the people they wouldn't have had to <sighs> agreed killjoy i'm sorry this shit this shit really this shit really bothers me man it really bugs me I just want people, I just want people to do activism in, in an effective way. This seems nice. Rainier Valley Water Resiliency Course. They're offering a vocational stormwater management training program called the Rainier Valley Water Resiliency Course. That seems cool. With support from industry professionals, this course will guide five to seven participants through a hybrid, interactive, and hands-on educational experience. Upon completion, graduations will receive a $4,000 stipend. For what? Wait. Just, just, just flat? There's no way. From the city, I assume. Sometimes they do that. Oh, that's pretty cool. In partnership with Dynamic Water. Okay. This is cool. See, this is good. This is good. I like this. This is great. Probably don't publish your stuff in a Google Doc. Sorry, I feel like I had a lot of pent-up negativity going into that. I stand by literally everything that I said, by the way. Materially, like, like uh, factually, I stand by everything that I said. Bailey A, I think that community gardens should be for um, herbs, like like mint and rosemary and stuff, because those you actually can grow a lot of it with a small plot of land, like enough for people to like actually benefit from it meaningfully. And they should just be for community enrichment. The main issue is that a lot of community gardens are like, first of all, it's not about sustainable food growing. OK, one community garden probably has within its radius of influence hundreds of people like you're not producing food at any meaningful scale here. Herbs you can get away with. Like rosemary, you can produce a lot of rosemary in a small plot of land. Lavender, you know, stuff like that. That's fine. Uh, yeah, and they're for community engagement. Herbs are expensive as fuck, so grow it if you can. Also, for some stuff, like rosemary, you can't buy it good. Like, kind of. Like, nothing compares to just having fresh uh, rosemary, like a sprig that you've, like, plucked off, you know? Uh, a lot of food is fine you get it from the grocery store it's fine you know like maybe not fruits and vegetables like it'd be better if it was fresh picked or whatever but oh, there's a lot of stuff there that's valuable um but fresh rosemary is pretty amazing yeah Fortnite. it's not a stun lock it's 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 a segment 
It's well, everything's a stun lock. Everything's a stun lock. People say, oh, this is a stun lock. You just mean you don't like it. 